to the 2023 CDL Air Brakes Practice Test. This test has 60 questions with explained answers to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to jumpstart that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your CDL instructor to walk you through the question. Question one, does a Class A RV require a CDL if it weighs less than 26,000 pounds? A, yes, every state requires a CDL if it weighs less than 26,000 pounds. B, yes, but only in your state of residence if it weighs less than 26,000 pounds. C, no, a CDL is not required if the vehicle is purchased from a dealership. D, no, if your Class A RV weighs less than 26,000 pounds, you don't need a special license of any kind, regardless of what state you live in. The correct answer is D, no, if your Class A RV weighs less than 26,000 pounds, you don't need a special license of any kind, regardless of what state you live in. If your Class A RV weighs less than 26,000 pounds, you don't need a special license of any kind, regardless of what state you live in. It is a good idea to be aware of future changes and revisions. Question 2. If the weight of the vehicle is doubled, how many times must the stopping power be increased? A. If the weight is doubled, the braking force must be tripled to stop at the same distance. B. Stopping power does not need to be increased if the weight of the vehicle is under one ton. C. If the weight is doubled, the braking force must be doubled to stop at the same distance. D. None of the above. The correct answer is... C. If the weight is doubled, the braking force must be doubled to stop at the same distance. If the weight is doubled, the braking force must be doubled to be able to stop at the same distance. If the speed is doubled, the braking force must be increased four times to be able to stop at the same distance. When weight and speed are both doubled, the braking force must be increased eight times to be able to stop at the same distance. Question 3. What are the five main components of a basic air brake system capable of stopping a vehicle? A. Compressor, reservoir, foot valve, brake chamber, brake lining, and drums. B. Regulator, reservoir, foot valve, brake chamber, brake lining, and drums. C. Compressor, cylinders, foot valve, brake chamber, brake lining, and drums. D. Compressor, reservoir, tanks, brake chamber, brake lining, and drums. The correct answer is... A. Compressor, reservoir, foot valve, brake chamber, brake lining, and drums. A basic air brake system capable of stopping a vehicle has five main components. One, a compressor to pump air with a governor to control it. Two, a reservoir or tank to store the compressed air. Three, a foot valve to regulate the flow of compressed air from the reservoir when it is needed for braking. Four, brake chambers and slack adjusters to transfer the force exerted by the compressed air to mechanical linkages. Five, brake linings and drums or rotors to create the friction required to stop the wheels. Question four, which combination of endorsements below is correct? A, school bus, passenger, tank vehicles, double or triple, hazardous materials. B, school bus, passenger, hydraulic lift gates, tank vehicles, hazardous materials. C. School bus, passenger, tank vehicles, double or triple, oversized heavy loads. D. School bus, passenger, tank vehicles, double or triple, commercial food hauling. The correct answer is... A. School bus, passenger, tank vehicles, double or triple, hazardous materials. Verbatim, school bus, passenger, tank vehicles, double or triple, hazardous materials. Question 5. What are the three factors that stopping distance consists of? A. Driver's reaction time, brake leg, PSI of the tire. B. Driver's reaction time, tire tread, braking distance. C. Driver's reaction time, brake leg, braking distance. D. Driver's reaction time, ambient temperature, braking distance. The correct answer is C. Driver's reaction time, brake leg, braking distance. Braking distance, the total distance the vehicle travels after the brake is applied until the vehicle stops. 
Stopping distance is the total distance a vehicle travels while coming to a stop, and it consists of three main factors. The driver's reaction time refers to the time it takes for the driver to perceive a hazard and apply the brakes. Brake leg is the time it takes for the brakes to engage after they are applied. And braking distance is the distance the vehicle travels while coming to a complete stop after the brakes are applied. Question 6. What is meant by the term friction? A. Friction is the force that resists movement between two surfaces in contact with each other. B. Friction is force that increases movement between two surfaces in contact with each other. C. Friction is the result of speed and distance divided by how many surfaces are in contact with each other multiplied by a factor of two. D. Friction is the force that absorbs the heat between two surfaces in contact with each other. The correct answer is... A. Friction is the force that resists movement between two surfaces in contact with each other. Friction is the force that resists movement between two surfaces in contact with each other. To stop a vehicle, the brake shoe linings are forced against the machine surfaces of the brake drums, creating friction. This friction produces heat. Question 7. A bus may be classified as which of the following? A. Class A. B. Class A. B. C. Class C. D. Depends on the GVWR is over 26,001 pounds. The correct answer is C. Class C. A bus may be Class A, B, or C depending on whether the GVWR is over 26,001 pounds or is a combination vehicle. Question 8. You must have a DCL to operate a. Any single vehicle with a gross vehicle weight rating, GVWR, of 26,001 pounds or more. B. A combination vehicle with a gross combination weight rating, GCWR, of 26,001 or more pounds, provided the GVWR of the vehicles being towed is more than 10,000 pounds. C. A vehicle designed to transport 16 or more passengers, including the driver. D. Any size vehicle which requires hazardous material placards or is carrying material listed as a select agent or toxin in 42 CFR Part 73 Hazardous Material Endorsement. E. All of the above. The correct answer is E. All of the above. All of the above verbatim, including federal regulations through the Department of Homeland Security, requires a background check and fingerprinting for the hazardous materials endorsement. Question 9. It is illegal to operate a CMV if your blood alcohol concentration, BAC, is blank or more. A. 0.03%. B. 0.04%. C. 0.05%. D. 0.06%. The correct answer is B. 0.04%. It is illegal to operate a CMV if your blood alcohol concentration, BAC, is 0.04% or more. If you operate a CMV, you shall be deemed to have given your consent to alcohol testing. Question 10. What is the formula for total stopping distance? A. Perception distance plus reaction distance plus braking distance equals total stopping distance. B. Perception time plus reaction time plus braking time equals total stopping distance. C. Perception duration plus reaction duration plus braking duration equals total stopping distance. D. Perception ratio plus reaction ratio plus braking ratio equals total stopping distance. The correct answer is A. Perception distance plus plus reaction distance plus braking distance equals total stopping distance. The distance your vehicle travels in ideal conditions from the time your eyes see a hazard until your brain recognizes it. Question 11. A hazard is any road condition or other road user, driver, bicyclist, pedestrian that is a possible danger, true or false. A. True. B. False. The correct answer is A. True. What is a hazard? A hazard is any road condition or other road user, driver, bicyclist, pedestrian, that is a possible danger. Question 12. If you are driving a 30-foot vehicle at 55 miles per hour, how many seconds of the following distance should you allow? A. 2 seconds. 
B. Three seconds. C. Four seconds. D. Five seconds. The correct answer is B. Three seconds. How much space should you keep in front of you? One good rule says you need at least one second for every 10 feet of vehicle length at speeds below 40 miles per hour. At greater speeds, you must add one second for safety. Question 13. If a speed limit is posted or there is a sign indicating maximum safe speed, never exceed the speed shown. Your most important consideration is to select a speed that is not too fast for the A. Total weight of the vehicle and cargo. B. Length of the grade, steepness of the grade. C. Road conditions, weather. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. You should select a speed that is not too fast for the total weight of the vehicle and cargo, length of the grade, steepness of the grade, road conditions, and weather when adhering to posted speed limits or maximum safe speed signs. Considering all these factors is crucial for safe driving. Question 14. How would you know if your vehicle has anti-lock brakes? A. Tractors, trucks, and buses will have yellow ABS malfunction lamps on the instrument panel. B. Truck tractors with air brakes built on or after March 1, 1997. C. Trailers will have yellow ABS malfunction lamps on the left side, either on the front or rear corner. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. Anti-lock brakes, ABS, are typically equipped on tractors, trucks, buses, and trailers, and their presence can be indicated by yellow ABS malfunction lamps on the instrument panel of tractors, trucks, and buses, as well as on the left side, either on the front or rear corner, of trailers. This means that options A, B, and C are all correct in identifying how you can know if your vehicle has anti-lock brakes. Question 15. How do you correct a driver wheel skid? A. Accelerate counter steer. B. Brake hard and counter steer. C. Downshift counter steer. The correct answer is D. Stop braking counter steer. Do the following to correct a drive wheel braking skid. Stop braking. This will let the rear wheels roll again and keep the rear wheels from sliding counter steer. As a vehicle turns back on course, it tends to keep on turning. Unless you turn the steering wheel quickly the other way, you may find yourself skidding in the opposite direction. Question 16. Gross Vehicle Weight Rating, GVWR, is defined as A. Weight transmitted to the ground by one axle or one set of axles. B. Value specified by the manufacturer as the loaded weight of a single vehicle. C. Maximum safe weight a tire can carry at a specified pressure. D. None of the above. The correct answer is B. Value specified by the manufacturer as the loaded weight of a single vehicle. Gross Vehicle Weight Rating, GVWR. The value specified by the manufacturer is the loaded weight of a single vehicle. Question 17. Gross Combination Weight Rating, GCWR, is defined as a. Value specified by the manufacturer as the loaded weight of a single vehicle. B. Weight transmitted to the ground by one axle or one set of axles. C. Maximum safe weight a tire can carry at a specified pressure. D. Gross vehicle weights, GVWs, of the power unit and the towed units, or any combination thereof, that produces the highest value. The correct answer is... D. Gross vehicle weights, GVWs, of the power unit and the towed units, or any combination thereof, that produces the highest value. Gross combination weight rating, GCWR, the value specified by the manufacturer of the power unit if the value is displayed on the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard, FMVSS certification label, or the sum of the gross vehicle weight ratings, GVWRs, or the gross vehicle weights, GVWs, of the power unit and the towed units, or any combination thereof that produces the highest value. Question 18. What hazardous materials are permissible to carry on a bus? A. Small arms ammunition labeled ORM-D, emergency hospital supplies and drugs. B. Division 2.3 poison gas, liquid class 6 poison, tear gas, irritating material. 
C. Explosives in the space occupied by people except small arms ammunition. D. More than 100 pounds of solid Class Six poisons. The correct answer is... A. Small arms ammunition labeled ORM-D, emergency hospital supplies, and drugs. Buses may carry small arms ammunition labeled ORM-D, emergency hospital supplies, and drugs. You can carry small amounts of some other hazardous materials if the shipper cannot send them any other way. Question 19. What hazardous materials are not permitted to be carried on a bus? A. Labeled radioactive materials in the space occupied by people. B. Division 2.3 poison gas, liquid class 6 poison, tear gas, irritating material. C. Explosives in the space occupied by people except small arms ammunition. D. B. C. E. All of the above. The correct answer is... D. B. C. Buses must never carry Division 2.3 poison gas, liquid class 6 poison, tear gas, irritating material more than 100 pounds of solid class 6 poison, explosives in the space occupied by people except small arms ammunition, labeled radioactive materials in a space occupied by people, more than 500 pounds total of allowed hazardous materials, and no more than 100 pounds of any one class. Question 20. What is the definition of road rage? A. Willful and blatant disregard for the safety of other drivers. B. Operating a motor vehicle in a selfish, bold, or pushing manner without regard for the rights or safety of others. C. Violent anger caused by the stress and frustration involving a motor vehicle. D. A. C. E. All of the above. The correct answer is D. A. C. A motorist uncontrolled anger that is usually provoked by another motorist irritating act and is expressed in aggressive or violent behavior. Road rage is operating a motor vehicle with the intent of doing harm to others or physically assaulting a driver or their vehicle. Question 21. On a properly functioning vehicle with dual air brake system and normal-sized air tanks, air pressure should build from 85 to 100 psi within how many seconds? A. 15 seconds. B. 45 seconds. C. 90 seconds. D. 60 seconds. The correct answer is... B. 45 seconds. On a properly functioning vehicle with a dual air brake system and normal-sized air tanks, air pressure should build from 85 to 100 psi within 45 seconds. Check manufacturer specifications for larger tanks. Section 5. Air Brakes. Question 22. What is the function of the air compressor in the air brake system of a CMV? A. Pumps air into the air storage tanks, reservoirs. B. Compresses diesel fuel in the air storage tanks, reservoirs. C. Pumps air into the air conditioner system to keep the cab cool. D. Compressed air pressure in the sleeper or bunk area. The correct answer is... A. Pumps air into the air storage tanks, reservoirs. The air compressor pumps air into the air storage tanks, reservoirs. The key term in the question is air brake system. The air compressor in this question has nothing to do with diesel fluid or the air conditioning system. Question 23. When the pressure in the air tank rises to the cut-out level, the air compressor governor will stop the compressor from pumping air. This happens around A. 170 PSI B. 60 PSI C. 125 PSI. D. Depends on vehicle speed. The correct answer is... C. 125 PSI. The answer to this question is based on general knowledge, memory. The air compressor governor stops the compressor from pumping air at around 125 PSI. Question 24. A low-pressure warning signal is blank on vehicles with air brakes. A. Optional. B. Recommended. C. Required. D. Banned. The correct answer is... C. Required. All CMVs with air brakes are required to have a low-pressure warning signal and must include a warning signal you can see. Question 25. 
Water and oil sometimes collect in the bottom of air tanks. Why must they be drained? A. Water can replace the air and cause brakes to drag. B. Oil is flammable and can result in brake fire. C. Water can freeze in cold weather and cause the brakes to fail. D. Water and oil don't mix. The correct answer is... C. Water can freeze in cold weather and cause the brakes to fail. During cold weather, water in the air tanks can freeze and cause brakes to fail. CMVs with air brakes come equipped with automatic, manual, or dual-function air tank drain valves. Be sure to know what equipment you will be handling. Question 26. What is the method for testing hydraulic brakes for leaks? A. Pump the brake pedal three times and apply firm pressure for five seconds. B. Pump the brake pedal five times and apply firm pressure for 15 seconds. C. Pump the brake pedal nine times and apply firm pressure for 20 seconds. D. Pump the brake pedal six times and apply firm pressure for 10 seconds. The correct answer is... A. Pump the brake pedal three times and apply firm pressure for five seconds. If the CMV has hydraulic brakes and you need to check for leaks, pump the brake pedal three times and apply firm pressure for five seconds. The pedal should not move. If it does, there may be a leak or other problem. Question 27. What three braking systems make up a CMV's air brake system? A. Service, trailer, and parking brake systems. B. Service, parking, and emergency brake systems. C. Back, front, and parking brake systems. D. Trailer, front, and back brake systems. The correct answer is... B. Service, parking, and emergency brake systems. Service, parking, and emergency brake systems. The parking brake system applies and releases the parking brakes when you use the parking brake control. The service brake system applies and releases the brakes when you use the brake pedal during normal driving. The emergency brake system uses parts of the service and parking brake systems to stop the CMV in case of a brake system failure. Question 28. How much following distance does a 60-foot truck traveling under 40 miles per hour need? A. 10 seconds. B. 6 seconds. C. 4 seconds. D. 9 seconds. The correct answer is... B. 6 seconds. For time intervals following distance, use the following heavy vehicle formula. One second required for each 10 feet of vehicle length at speeds under 40 miles per hour. Above 40 miles per hour, use the same formula, then add one second for the additional speed. Question 29. What are spring brakes? A. Brakes used for emergency and parking brake systems. B. Powerful springs held back by air pressure. When air is released, the springs allow for braking. C. Brakes that will come on fully when air pressure drops below 20 to 45 PSI. D. All of the above. The correct answer is... D. All of the above. All trucks, truck tractors, and buses must be equipped with emergency brakes and parking brakes. Spring brakes are usually used to meet this requirement. Question 30. How do you know if your vehicle is equipped with anti-lock brakes? A. A yellow-colored lamp with the letters ABS will be located on the vehicle's instrument panel when the vehicle is turned on. B. There's no need to know. C. The CMV will brake faster than usual. D. None of the above. The correct answer is... A. A yellow-colored lamp with the letters ABS will be located on the vehicle's instrument panel when the vehicle is turned on. Your CMV will have a ABS malfunction warning light that will illuminate when the vehicle is first turned to the on position. All trailers manufactured on or after March 1, 1998 are required to have ABS brakes. If the trailer was manufactured prior to that date, check under the vehicle for the ECU and wheel speed sensor wires coming from the back of the brakes. Question 31. The blank is connected to the engine and pumps air into the storage tanks. A. Air storage tanks. B. Dual air brakes. C. Air compressor. D. Air drains. The correct answer is... C. Air compressor. Gears or a V-belt are used to connect the air compressor to the engine. The compressor may be cooled by the engine cooling system. If it does not have its own oil supply, 
then it is lubricated by engine oil. Question 32. And blank helps prevent ice in air brake valves in cold weather. A. Alcohol evaporator. B. Brake deicer. C. Air brake heater. D. None of the above. The correct answer is... A. Alcohol evaporator. Some air brake systems are equipped with an alcohol evaporator. It helps reduce the risks of ice in air brake valves and other parts by putting alcohol into the air system. Ice in the air brake system is dangerous and could cause the brakes to fail. Question 33. What is not part of the brake drum? A. Brake chamber. B. Slack adjuster. C. Brake cam. D. Draining valve. The correct answer is D. Draining valve. The braking drums are located on both sides of the vehicle's axis. The braking mechanism is inside the drum and bolted to the wheels. The brake shoes and linings are pushed against the drum to stop the vehicle. Question 34. A yellow diamond-shaped push-pull control knob is used to activate the A. Service brake B. ABS C. Parking brake D. Control valves The correct answer is C. Parking brake a yellow diamond-shaped knob is used to apply the parking brake in newer vehicles. Some older vehicles use a lever. The parking brake should always be applied when the vehicle is parked. Question 35. Most heavy-duty vehicles use blank for safety. A. Dual air brakes. B. Anti-lock brakes. C. Triple air brakes. D. All of the above. The correct answer is A. Dual air brakes. A single set of controls is used to operate a dual air brake system. Two separate air brake systems are used. One system operates the primary brakes in the front of the vehicle, and the other operates the brakes on the rear axles. Question 36. The low air pressure warning light and buzzer will activate at blank PSI. A. 65. B. 85. C. 30 to 40. D. 60. The correct answer is D. 60. When testing the air brake system, drivers should make sure that the low air pressure warning light and buzzer activate at 60 PSI. After the buzzer and light activate, the driver should continue to pump the brakes until the parking brake is activated between 45 and 20 PSI. Question 37. How many air brake gauges are on a vehicle with a dual air brake system? A. 2. B. 4. C. 1. D. 0. The correct answer is A. 2. Air pressure gauges are used to tell a driver how much air pressure is in the air tanks. For dual air brake system, there is a gauge for each half of the system. Question 38. The stop light switch is controlled by A. Electric control. B. Air pressure. C. Pumping the brakes. D. All of the above. The correct answer is B. Air pressure. When the brakes are applied, the stop light switch activates the red brake lights on the rear of the vehicle. The brake lights are used to alert other drivers when the vehicle is backing up, slowing down, or stopping. Question 39. What is included in the seven-step air brake test? A. Air pressure rebuild rate. B. Test the governor cut in and cut out pressure. C. Air pressure leakage. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. A seven-step air brake test should be conducted once a day before a vehicle goes out on the road. Air brakes need to be checked to make sure they do not lose air pressure too quickly and that it does not take too long to build air pressure back up. It is also important that all air brake gauges are working correctly. Question 40. Air pressure is released from the compressor by A. Activating the stop light switch. B. Pumping the brake pedal. C. Slowly pressing the brake. D. Activating the emergency brake. The correct answer is B. Pumping the brake pedal. Continuing to press and release the brake causes air pressure to be released from the compressor quicker than it can be replaced. This type of braking is used during an air brake test, but should be avoided while driving. Brakes could fail if the compressor loses air faster than it can be replaced.
Question 41. During cold weather, the alcohol evaporator should be checked A. Once a week B. Every time the vehicle is parked C. Every day D. Two times a day The correct answer is C. Every day In cold weather, the alcohol evaporator should be checked daily and filled as needed. The alcohol evaporator is used to prevent ice in the air brake system and does not need to be checked as often during warmer weather. Question 42. The total stopping distance for air brakes is blank than hydraulic brakes. A. Longer. B. Shorter. C. Same. D. Varies. The correct answer is A. Longer. Air takes longer to flow through the lines than hydraulic fluid. This increases the total stopping distance of air brakes compared to hydraulic brakes. Question 43. Blank are used to hold compressed air. A. Brake lines. B. Air storage tanks. C. Governor. D. Compressor. The correct answer is B. Air storage tanks. Compressed air is held in air storage tanks. The size of the tanks depend on the size of the vehicle. If the compressor stops, the tanks still hold enough air to use the brake several times after. Question 44. Blank are on the drum brakes between the push rod and the S cam. A. Push rod. B. Brake chamber. C. Castle nut. D. Slack adjusters. The correct answer is D. Slack adjusters. Slack adjusters are used to adjust brakes to protect the brake shoe and pads from too much wear. Slack adjusters are an important component in the air brake system. Question 45. The modular control valve enables the driver to A. Rapidly apply the spring brakes. B. Slowly apply the spring brakes. C. Switch from spring to emergency brake. D. Deactivate the ABS. The correct answer is B. Slowly apply the spring brakes. Spring brakes serve as a parking and emergency brake. The modular control valve enables the driver to apply the spring brake gradually. A lever on the dashboard controls the modular control valve. Question 46. Blank railroad crossings are controlled by gates and lights. A. Active. B. Passive. C. Invalid. D. Urban. The correct answer is A. Active. Active railroad crossings have moderate to heavy train traffic. Gates and lights are used to warn drivers of an oncoming train. Drivers should stop 50 to 15 feet before the crossing, secure the vehicle, stop and look for trains before crossing. Drivers should cross the tracks without shifting gears. Question 47. What is not a part of the air brake system? A. Governor. B. Brake pedal. C. Pipeline. D. Compressor. The correct answer is C. Pipeline. The main components of an air brake system are as follows. Compressor controls the amount of air going into the system. Governor controls the compressor. Air tanks stores air. Air lines direct air into the system. Brake pedal applies the brakes on and off. Foundation brakes. The brake pedal directs air to the foundation brakes. These are only some of the main components of an air brake system. There are also many other smaller parts. Question 48. When blank, a driver should apply brakes to 5 miles per hour below speed limit. A. Driving on a downgrade. B. Driving on an upgrade. C. Approaching an overpass. D. Approaching railroad crossing. The correct answer is A. Driving on a downgrade. The safest braking technique to use when driving on a downgrade is snub braking. Snub braking is when a driver presses the surface brake hard enough to bring the vehicle 5 miles per hour below the speed limit. Question 49. Draining the air tanks at the end of each day is important to remove blank and blank. A. Grime, dirt. B. Dust, ice. C. Oil, moisture. D. Dirt, rocks. The correct answer is C. Oil, moisture. It is important for drivers to drain the vehicle's air tanks at the end of each day. Draining the tanks helps eliminate oil and moisture. If oil and moisture remain in the tanks, it may cause corrosion, which could damage the brakes and cause failure. 
Question 50. The only time it is safe not to apply the parking brake on an unattended vehicle is when the vehicle is A. Parked on a flat surface B. Parked with wheels turned toward a curb C. Parked on a gravel surface D. Never The correct answer is D. Never A vehicle's parking brake must always be applied when it is unattended. For additional safety, a driver might also chalk the wheels for extra security. Parking a vehicle on a flat surface is not enough protection against the vehicle rolling. Question 51. Air pressure should build up from 85 to 100 psi within blank seconds. A. 45. B. 60. C. 30. D. 25. The correct answer is A. 45. After checking to make sure air pressure is not lost too quickly, the driver must make sure the air pressure builds back up in a safe amount of time. When building the pressure back up, the driver should time how long it takes for the PSI to build up from 85 to 100. This should be done within 45 seconds. Question 52. The treadle valve is another name for A. S. Cam B. Brake Pedal C. Brake Pad D. Drum Pedal The correct answer is B. Brake Pedal The treadle valve is another name for the brake pedal and can also be called a foot valve. When the treadle valve is pressed, air travels through the air brake chambers, which applies pressure to the drums, causing the vehicle to slow or stop. Question 53. When should a driver press the brake pedal the same time as the spring brakes are applied? A. When stopping for pedestrians. B. When the vehicle needs extra traction. C. When stopped on a steep hill. D. Never. The correct answer is D. Never. The spring brakes and brake pedal should never be applied at the same time. The combined force of air pressure and the springs may damage the brakes. Question 54. What may happen if brakes become too hot? A. Brake failure. B. Increased stopping distance. C. Air compressor failure. D. All of the above. The correct answer is A. Brake failure. If brakes are used too often, they may overheat and become less effective. This is called brake fade. The air compressor cools off brakes to prevent overheating. Question 55. Switching to a lower gear on a downgrade will A. Make brakes more sensitive. B. Prevent overuse of brakes. C. Cause a smoother ride. D. Assist with stab braking. The correct answer is B. Prevent overuse of brakes. When driving on a downgrade, switching to a lower gear will slow down the vehicle with less brake usage. This is also called engine braking. Question 56. How does the driver apply the parking brake? A. Pushing in the control knob. B. Pumping brake pedal. C. Pulling out the control knob. D. None of the above. The correct answer is C. Pulling out the control knob. The parking brake is controlled by a yellow diamond-shaped knob. This knob should be pulled out when applying the emergency brake and pushed in when releasing the emergency brake. The emergency brake should always be applied when the vehicle is unattended. Question 57. During an air brake test, the vehicle should not lose more than blank PSI per minute. A. 10 B. 5 C. 2 D. 4 The correct answer is C. 2 during an air brake inspection, the vehicle should lose not more than 2 PSI per minute for a single vehicle. For a combination vehicle, the PSI should not drop more than 3 PSI per minute. Question 58. The blank should not move more than an inch when the brakes are applied. A. Slack adjuster. B. Brake chamber. C. Push rod. D. S cam. The correct answer is... A. Slack adjuster. Slack adjusters should be checked daily to make sure they do not move more than an inch when the brakes are applied. If they move more than an inch, they may need to be fixed or adjusted. Question 59. The emergency brakes are held by blank force. A. Air. B. Heated. 
C. Compressed. D. Mechanical. The correct answer is D. Mechanical. As a safety feature, the emergency brakes must be held by mechanical force. Mechanical force is needed for the emergency brake since air pressure can drop. Question 60. What is the controlled braking method? A. Pumping the brakes. B. Press brake pedal slow, gentle. C. Press brakes and release, repeat. D. Applying the brakes hard without locking them. The correct answer is... D. Applying the brakes hard without locking them. Controlled braking should be used when a vehicle is driving straight. Locking the brakes should be avoided. If the brakes do lock up, the driver should release the brake pedal and apply again when it is safe. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the first link in the description to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your CDL exam on your first try.